everybody, I'm Jammer, and the Animal Crossing Direct concluded just yesterday, and, uh, well, we just got an overload of information. To be quite frank, I'm kind of overwhelmed by how much new information we got here. It's not necessarily worth going over the obvious stuff. If you want to learn about the stuff they, they generally talked about that was quite clear in the presentation, I obviously encourage you to watch the Direct itself. I think it's a better opportunity to take a look at some of the more hidden and secret details that were shown within just visuals, as well as some of the other trailers that were posted on the official Animal Crossing New Horizons website. I did my best to organize these ideas into a couple of different categories so we can kind of, to kind of keep us on track, but the reality is there's a lot to go over, and so if we jump around a little bit, yeah, that, that's probably what's going to happen. But before we get started, do you like Animal Crossing New Horizons? Well, I mean, you could subscribe. I'm going to be doing plenty more on this game course when it comes out, so if you enjoy the video, you're welcome to click that button. It's free and all, so I don't know. YouTube said I'm supposed to promote this at the beginning of the video now. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. So first to start things off, let's talk about some of the new aspects we learned about surrounding villagers. Some of the new interactions and animations they have. In addition to some of the new gameplay mechanics surrounding the characters. The first thing to show off is a lot of the new animations that the villagers have. Because typically in Animal Crossing past games, they would just wander around the village. But beyond that, they wouldn't really do much besides being a vessel you could talk to. Sure, in later entries in the series, they eventually were able to wield tools and all, like a watering can, fishing rod, bug net, but they never really used them. They were just holding it for visual aesthetic. So that you could quote unquote pretend that they were going fishing, when in all reality they weren't really doing much. But throughout the footage we saw here, we learned a lot about what other what villagers can do in this game. For example, in this scene here, you see Goldie using her water can to water the flowers. You do, in fact, see the water driplets coming off the tulip, so it could indicate perhaps that Goldie's actually watering the flowers. It isn't just an animation. In this scene here, we see Bunny sitting on the ground, enjoying herself a lovely chocolate popsicle. Oh my gosh, cuteness overload. And then later in the direct, we actually see two villagers, one eating a donut and the other actually lifting a, a dumbbell. So it's kind of cool to see this variety of different things the villagers can do while walking around and, you know, living in the town to give them a little bit more life and personality to their character. The biggest and probably the most important gameplay change that has come to the villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons is how they move into the town. Because my personal biggest critique and the reason I stopped playing New Leaf was the fact that residents could not only move in whatever they wanted, but they could choose wherever they wanted to move. So before a villager is even moving into the town, you can preemptively place down plots in advance for villagers to move into. So you can kind of make designated areas where the villagers could potentially move in, and then eventually, if one by chance does, it'll automatically choose to go to that place. So you already have a plot of land planned out for them. They also talked about how sometimes you can invite specific people to move in, and there are multiple ways to do that, whether they're camping in your village, whether you meet them on a Nook Miles tour, which we'll talk about later. In addition to, there was one moment where Tomic was talking about how three people were interested in the town, so it kind of makes me wonder if, like, those three people will, like, be visiting the town temporarily, and maybe you can interview them and talk to them and potentially even choose which character is the one that actually moves to your village. And another amazing thing, Another amazing feature coming alongside being able to choose where the villagers move is also being able to build a villager home right on top of a tree or whatever obstacles that might be in the way. The process is so much more streamlined this time around and really benefits the player to have full control over their town and their island so there isn't just random factors of villagers moving in and interrupting all your plans. So moving on from villager stuff, let's talk about some of the shops we finally saw. Cause yes, we finally see some shops. We've only ever seen the villager resident center, but beyond that, we never really knew what kind of other shops there would be in the game. Nook's Cranny, of course, makes its return and Timmy and Tommy, of course, will be running it again like they did in New Leaf. And they explained it how that it'll be a shop that contains items you can't craft because there are a lot of materials and stuff you can collect throughout the game, like wood, rocks, and other materials like that that can, then you can use your DIY recipes to make said furniture and items and other stuff that you can put in your town. But there are a collection of items in the Animal Crossing series that they just don't have the right materials to make. I mean, how are you going to collect plastic? And so this is a great solution here where Nook's Cranny will sell those items that you can't craft. In tandem with that, they also show the Able Sisters shop and a lot of the accessories that can sell there. And both Nook's Cranny and the Able Sisters have this in common called cabinet shopping. So there's of course a couple of items on display in both of their shops, but in the back there's a cabinet or a little dressing room you can interact with where then all of a sudden it opens up to a bigger catalog of items. Now it doesn't necessarily specify what this is, 
And I think it could be one of two things. It could be your player's catalog from all your previous purchases so then you can repurchase things you had bought in the past. Or it could be a larger inventory of stock that is offered at the time so it's not just the ones on display rather than just a collection of you know two furniture items perhaps other stuff that has been available in the past will then be able to be ordered through the cabinet the big one in my personal opinion was of course the museum wow oh wow what a glow up i don't know why but the museum has always been one of my favorite shops quote unquote in the series it's just a great way to show your progression in the game and all the cool and different wildlife you can interact with in the game and this time around, the museum looks absolutely insane. We do get a lot of great footage to kind of get a good idea of what kind of layout the museum has. In addition to the direct, we also had a trailer that's on the Animal Crossing website that does show some more angles of some of the shots we've already seen, but it also does show a new room within the fishing area, kind of showing this underwater tube that eventually opens up to the large fish tank we saw in the direct. There was one other shop shown in some of the footage here, but it's kind of hard to tell what it was because what's in the window you see some of the you see some flower seed packets and we already know that that can be bought at maybe nook's cranny one of the upgrade tiers of nook's cranny or it could be potentially a garden shop and some and the return of leaf as that character but the reason it's worth bringing up is there's actually it does appear in two different trailers in two different seasons and the interesting thing about it is in this scene the outside of the shop front is actually themed to Halloween. You got some pumpkins, you got some bat decorations. It's really cool to see the visuals of that building change based on the season. So it makes me wonder what other kind of shops could do something similar to kind of theme the whole town to whatever season you are currently in. Now this is a PSA. Alert, alert, alert. They confirmed you can move your house or a facility after it's already been built. I know. All you have to do is top the tongue nook at the town hall. When discussing the construction consultation with him, he actually also gives you the option to completely move buildings. So truly nothing is locked in when it comes to your town. So let's move on to some of the nook phone stuff. We get a, a look at a wide variety of apps throughout the direct and we'll list through them real quickly here. We see the camera, nook miles, encyclopedia, DIY, nook shopping, Island Designer, Custom Design Pro Editor, Map, Passport, and Rescue Service. A lot of these we've seen before, but some notable ones that are new is, of course, well, the Encyclopedia. We finally actually get a good look at the Encyclopedia and the contents of that app. I really like the simple user interface of it and how it clearly shows you what time, time of year certain bugs and fish are available to catch. So you know exactly when, if you're looking for something, you can get it with quite ease. In the Custom Design Pro Editor, there's actually a scene that shows off the fact that you can create transparent custom designs. And why this is such a big deal is because as we'll see later, when you're doing, when you're creating your paths, you can actually use custom designs as a path. So you can put patterns on the ground that have a transparent background. So you can make little patterns for footprints or little clovers to really add a variety to your town. But speaking of the custom design pro editor, the, you'll notice that it's not actually shown off in the earlier part of the trailer. And that's because of a certain feature within the Nook Miles. Nook Miles, as you all know, is a way to encourage players, give them something to do when they're looking for an objective. It's a little achievement system, or basically a way to give guidance to players of fun stuff to do. For every achievement you complete, you'll be rewarded with Nook Miles, a currency different from Bells. These Nook Miles can be redeemed for gift rewards, so like a collection of all these Tom Nook related themed clothing but you can also redeem them for Nook phone upgrades. There's the option to redeem it for a Nook Miles ticket. You can redeem it for the Custom Design Pro Editor so you can get the app on your phone. You can redeem it for pretty good tool recipes, which is basically showing that it's a way to unlock recipes for better tools. And as we've seen in some of the DIY clips, there is a progression system to your tools. There's actually like a skill tree-esque kind of thing where you can upgrade your tools along, increasingly getting a better tool. Another thing you can redeem is for the tool ring, which we've seen later in the direct, is a quick hotbar system to basically equip your tools. Essentially the toolbox we've all wanted all along. Another reward is pocket organization guide. Now I'm not entirely sure what this might mean. We do see in one of the trailers though, a villager with an insanely massive pocket storage. It might be actually a reward that you can redeem using Nook Miles to upgrade your personal inventory. Although at the same time, it is called organization guide, so I'm not sure what that means. Perhaps maybe it makes it so you can favorite certain things within your inventory. But I think it's safe to say, based on the other upgrades that are within this Nook Mile rewards, 
if there's any sort of inventory upgrade, it's bound to be within this list. And then the last three upgrades we see in the direct are a collection of eight different hairstyles based on pop, cool, and stylish, which essentially is pretty straightforward. It's probably a collection of eight brand new hairstyles you can equip for your character, so you can further customize your character. Now the big reward you can redeem with Nook Miles is called Nook Mile Tickets. After you get enough points and you purchase one, you can go down to Dodo Airlines where you can redeem the ticket to go on an adventure which is something I talked about almost a year ago at this point at the idea of what if Cap'n could do it. Essentially, when you redeem a ticket, Dodo Airlines will take you to some completely random brand new island. What's cool about that is that it will be completely different from your town. This randomly generated island will have new fruits and new flowers you can bring back to your town. It'll potentially be a different season from the town you're currently in. So perhaps if you're in summer and you're trying to catch a winter fish, you could redeem one of these tickets and potentially go to an island that's in winter, and then you can continue to do your progression there. Beyond that, occasionally there will be villagers camping on those islands, and if you interact with them and talk with them, you can actually encourage them to come back with you and visit your island. It's another way the game introduces to the player to be able to bring in the villagers they want to their town. There also will be secrets and stuff on these islands, as we see here, like the Money Island, I guess we could call it. We're in the middle of this pond. There's just all these rocks and money scattered throughout the ground. I'm curious to see what other kind of environment stuff we could see like that. Just like little fun little rewards on this expedition you're going on. Also, this kind of has nothing to do with anything, but I just got to say Wilbur is absolutely precious. How he talks using code words constantly is one of the cutest things ever. Like when you land Delta Oscar, Delta Oscar, or when you take off, he'll say lifting off November Oscar whisker, meaning like lifting off now. It's just, it's the most adorable thing ever. I love him. I love him so much. So let's talk about the island designer, the terraforming that blew, of course, my mind when we first saw that in the direct. So it does talk about how you have to eventually unlock it. It's not something you can get off right off the bat. And what, and from what it kind of looks like, it actually looks like you only will start off with just working with paths because we see two screens in the direct, one showing the option to be able to use waterscaping and terraforming and the other not having those options. So it looks like once you do eventually unlock it, you'll actually only start off with laying paths and then later you'll have the opportunity to do the terraforming work. And an interesting quick thing to know about the terraforming is that the tool you use actually swaps out depending on what you what action you want to do. The water shovel is a blue blue and silver shovel. And whenever you dig with that on a raised platform, it'll create a waterfall or just on the ground, it'll create more river or pond space. Then of course, there's the golden shovel that has to do with terraforming, drawing or bringing up levels, rounding off corners and stuff like that. I love the idea that your village is completely modular to your taste. You can move the houses around all you want. You can raise and lower the ground. You can move the rivers for that matter. It really feels like nothing is concrete and set in stone. So if even if you're a hundred hours in and all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I want to completely revamp my town. It looks like in this game, you actually will be able to do so. So let's talk about some of the quick little furniture details I'd like to mention from the direct. First of all, we see a quick look at the DIY customization showing the different options for paint color, as well as other design options that you can have furniture. And of course, you're also allowed to use custom designs for some of the items such as mugs, bedding, pillows. A great example that we see right off the bat is the hot tub. We see in two different occasions, one where it's like a white pristine looking tub, another one where it's a dark wood, but the water itself is pink. It looks wild. A cute thing to notice, we actually see a custom tool bench. This one being a cute little pink one compared to the regular tree stump one we've seen throughout plenty of the footage. Tying back into what we were talking about placing paths and stuff, we actually see here that you can place furniture on paths. And that's not only, which is a really big deal because previously when you would lay down a pattern on the ground in Animal Crossing, nothing else could go on that space. And one last small detail to notice about the furniture is that there was this fish tank and on top there was placed a bug cage. So it's kind of cool to see that the fish tank can actually be used as some sort of table and you can actually place stack stuff on top of each other. So I don't know, it's giving a more of a layering feature to these items. So let's talk about some of the new tools we actually saw in this direct. First off being the ladder. And before you get the option to be able to do the construction consultation, be able to be able to build the rivers as well as the pathways going up to raised platforms, we've already seen the vaulting pole, but now we know how you can actually make your way up to these upper high areas. In this case, you can use the ladder. You'll place it down immediately, your, your villager will climb up, and he'll pick it up right behind him. Another interesting tool we see in, in this direct is the wand. We're first introduced to it when Celeste starts talking about it, and she mentions it's like 
something that can change your appearance. We then see an example of it being shown where a player waves it and then a bunch of different dress options appear. And it kind of had me confused for a second, because first I'm like, okay, maybe you can just on the fly customize your clothing. But the thing is, a lot of these clothes were drastically different than, than the dress she was currently wearing. I mean, one of them's even a set of overalls. Perhaps the wand is a way to favorite certain outfits, and you don't actually have to have them in your inventory. You can maybe leave them at home or in your dressing wardrobe or wherever it might be to store your clothing. And so then you can quickly swap between certain outfits on a whim really quickly with your wand. I mean, that's kind of what it makes it look like it seems to be, but it's hard to tell how this item actually functions. And then finally, we don't see it in action, but randomly there is an ocarina in the DIY catalog. What's it gonna do? Who knows? So maybe this is the way so you can actually edit the time clock in game by playing the Song of Time. We do quickly see a very, very, very small glimpse of the character creation. It's about like two seconds long of gameplay, and it is only a viewpoint of creating a female character, so we don't see any of the male options anyways. But we can at least see the different categories of customization. There's the hairstyle tab we're currently on, and it starts off with a collection of just eight choices. But as we've seen already, you can later in-game unlock different hairstyle options by redeeming Nook Miles. One tab over, we see the option to customize your eyes, the options being there probably being the eye type and of course, eye color. Next tab over is the a nose and a mouth. And we've already seen the difference between having a triangle nose versus the circle, and potentially maybe there might be another option as well. In addition to that, we have seen villagers having different mouth shapes. So it's not just the standard smile. The next tab over, we see a paintbrush is how you edit your skin color. The face icon is probably where you actually select what gender character you're gonna be in this game. We already know there's a way to customize your hair at a later date, but it does make me wonder if you'll still be able to change your eyes, facial features, and skin color throughout the rest of the game as well. One thing to note though, is we do see a villager in this shot actually wearing a goatee. I mean, we didn't see in the character creation an option for any sort of facial hair. And in previous games, any sort of facial options were just considered an accessory that you had to find or purchase. But in this case, we see the villager wearing glasses as well as a goatee. Now, of course, there is a possibility that those 3D glasses come along with that goatee, so it's like a combined accessory. At the same time, that feels like a very oddly specific accessory to have a goatee with the 3D glasses. So perhaps there is a way to actually have facial hair, just we've yet to see it. So to wrap things up, there's a couple of tiny little secrets worth mentioning. First off, in this clip, we actually see an island off in the distance. And we already know there are different islands, such as Harvey having his little island photography island nearby, in addition to all the other islands you can visit with Nook Miles. But it is kind of cool to see that there's like something off in the horizon that could potentially be one of the islands I just mentioned, or another thing you can travel to as well. The final secret was only on screen for like a fraction of a second. But in this nighttime scene, off in the left hand corner, there's actually a glowing spot in the ground. Now true OG Animal Crossing fans will know that that was a feature that was only in Animal crossing on the gamecube once a day there'd be a glowing spot on the ground if you dug it up you'd get like i think a thousand bells but the cool part about that glowing spot is it had a gameplay mechanic behind it for one thing you could bury your shovel in it and then the next day you could dig it back up and it would be a golden shovel but the arguably cooler feature was the fact that you could make it a money tree bury any number of bells you wanted and upon burying it it'll create a golden sapling and if nurtured correctly, over time the tree will grow, and once the tree is flourished, it'll reap one single harvest of money growing on the trees. It'd be so cool to see that feature come back here in New Horizons, because it's such an obscure feature that was forgotten in Animal Crossing past, and it'd be so fun to see that come back in this game. Yes, bring back the money tree. So I think that's about everything I have for you. Of course, there's still there's still so much information in the direct. And like I said, I really wanna just go over some of the little secrets and details that I found throughout going through the footage. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe for tons more on Animal Crossing and New Horizons. Do let me know in the comments if you found any secrets of your own or really just what your favorite part of the direct was. Better yet, I'd love to hear your inspirations and ideas of how you're going to theme your village and what you're going to do some crazy ideas with the new terraforming. I am so excited for the creations that we're going to be able to create as a community. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in your towns, and it's going to be so fun to be able to play together at some point. So thanks again, guys, so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!